we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 43 of Urgency of Change. This and next week's podcast is Krishnamurti in conversation with Pupu Shayaka. This week's conversation is entitled, How Does One Inquire Into the Source of All Life? Next week they inquire into whether we can live without the burden of a thousand yesterdays. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Please see our official YouTube channel for hundreds of video and audio recordings of full talks and carefully chosen extracts. We are a non-profit charity and rely on your support to continue to preserve and make Krishnamurti's work available. If you enjoy our podcast, please consider leaving a review. Pupo who died in 1997, was an Indian cultural activist and writer, best known for her work on the revival of traditional and village arts, handlooms and handicrafts. She was a close friend of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and was her cultural advisor and biographer. Having been to a school established by Annie Besant, Pupo became involved with Krishnamurti's work in the 1940s, becoming a trustee of the Indian Foundation. This conversation between Krishnamurti and Pupo Jaka was recorded at Brockwood Park in 1982. The inquiry includes... What is the source of all existence, all life, all action? What is the approach of a mind that wants to inquire into something that it doesn't know, something that demands an extraordinary quality of deep subtlety, deep capacity of order? Why doesn't one feel totally responsible for the wars, the brutality, the terrible things that are happening in the world? Human beings have created such disorder in themselves and therefore outwardly. How does one comprehend or be aware of the origin of disorder? What is the state of action that is born out of complete attention? Is it necessary to go through the process of watching one's reactions and observing diligently one's relationships? Any person who gives attention who really says, I must find the source of life, who is passionate about it, not just casual, will listen. They will listen. It is in the air. Sir, most of our lives are so futile. Yes, And unless one discovers within oneself I, I don't want to, I want to use a right word. Perhaps the capacity to leap out of the futility. To leap out of the futility. Uh, to For the mind to have a creative spring so that it can move whatever it does. It's not what it does that is important. But the need for something which is new, which is not tainted. So that 
it doesn't matter what circumstances are, you seem to go beyond circumstances. And that only happens when the mind is not dependent on anything. And it has some space, some perception. And I have been wondering, perhaps it's a difficult question, but it's a question on which I have been uh, pondering for the last few months. And that is, uh, what is the ground of the creative? I wonder what you mean by creative. I mean, an artist says he's creative, a poet, a, a thinker, or some new discovery by a scientist. Would you call all that creative activity? Perhaps. The, uh, but it is limited. Some, they meant not acknowledge it. So why do you bring in the word limited? Oh, no, don't let you limited. Partial. Even that stuff. Why do I bring in? Because I don't know the other. No, but it's partial because it is not relative to their <coughs> daily life. Again? No, you, I, one may be a great scientist and may lead a very, very mediocre life. And the scientist may discover extraordinary thing and be and call that creative. But you see that's why I um, did not speak of a creative action. But creative mind. But a ground a, a mind, a ba um, a perception which is, rests in the creative. They, 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 I, I think we should make a little more clear the question, if you don't, if you you don't mind. Take, <coughs> you have never answered any questions on the ground of manifestation, for instance, let us take it at the simplest level. This coming to be of anything. Of birth, of anything. Of birth. It's a baby or a new tree or oh, yeah, oh, a bird. What, what, you, what, what, what is involved? Are you asking what is the source of all life, both the manifest and not manifest? Yes, I, the, I would like to probe, if, I, if it is possible, possible to probe, yes. into um, what you have said just now, the unmanifest and the manifest and the pre-manifest, if I'm, yes, I yes. won't even use unmanifest. That instant, that instant before manifestation is. For birth is. That, that one instant. Are we discussing this subject? It's, in a technological, scientific verbiage, or are we probing, probing into something which you and I don't know? Just a minute, I want to make clear. Because <coughs> after all, 
birth of babies, we know that, how, how it comes to be. It, it, but one may know how it comes into being, but one has, still does not know what? The quality of life which pervades it. Quality of? Life. Knowing that a baby is born because of... Various, uh, various it doesn't yeah. give you an experience of birth, sir. Yes. It, it, um, the actuality of birth is very different to the description of birth. Yes. It is the same with everything. The description is not the thing. It doesn't give you. No. Or the explanation is not the actual. But you cannot live through life without going into this, com this coming into existence. I don't quite follow what you're trying to convey. I'm not being obstreperous, but I'm not... I don't quite follow. If we talked about what is the origin of all life, what's the beginning of all existence, Not go back and back and back, you follow what I mean? But try to discover or come upon something which is the beginning of all things. I mean, various religious people said God. God is the origin of everything. But just a word that doesn't convey the, the mind that investigates what is the origin. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Now, are we discussing that, having a dialogue about that, to delve very, very deeply into the origin of all life? without any belief, without any dogma, and so on. Or are we having a dialogue, theoretically, in, in <coughs> kind of moving between the actual and not the actual, and trying to probe into something with the with thought. I don't know if I'm saying no, I understand right. what you're saying. You see, sir, we have narrowed the word creative That's right. to mean, as you said, painting or writing a book or discovering something in science. But basically, the whole... Um, meaning of um, a tree, a, a human being, the earth, the sky. I mean, man what? has asked this question. Of course he's asked this he's question. He's asked, what is all mean all this and, and what is the origin of all yes, this? Yes, where does it arise? Yes, that's it. What is the ground from which, it from which all this arises? That's what you are yes. asking, is that it? Yes. What is the source of all existence, all life, all action? Right? Now, how does one inquire into that? What is our approach to it? How do we come to investigate into something that demands an extraordinary Freedom, an extraordinary sense of non conditioned mind, if I can use it, doesn't it? A freedom, perhaps that very word freedom is love, it requires that quality of 
mind, which is both practical, sensitive, and has this quality of great compassion. I can't start with that. No. Because I don't that know is, what it is. How do we come to that point and from there move? So, if you put it that way, then I'm stuck. You're stuck. No, I, I'm just, I can't move. No, I'm just asking. I don't say it must be there. <clears throat> Isn't that the process of inquiry? I say this question arises in my mind. And I would like to move with this question into yeah. it. Yes. I, if I say that the mind must be free and therefore it is love and therefore alone it can, then what do I do? You can't do anything. But how do you inquire into something that man has asked for millions of years and inquire and give it a name and be satisfied with it? Hmm? But I don't, we are not doing that. We are saying, how does a mind inquire into something that must be extraordinary, that must have a a quality of not only universal, cosmic, if we can use that word, how, do, how does my mind, how one's mind, go into such a question? Into something of supreme order. How, how, do, how does one's inquiry begin? Where? If you inquire with thought, hmm, that doesn't lead very far. No, no, no. I, I'm not. Uh, you asked, how does the inquiry begin? Yes. What is the manner? How, what is the approach of a, of a mind that wants to inquire into something that it doesn't know or aware? Something that demands an extraordinary quality of deep subtlety, deep capacity of order and so on. Where do I begin? Obviously, by being aware of the disorder within oneself. First that is, I begin, I am after all the, the manifest. Yes. I am the I am a human being born. Yes. I know the the process of being born, how child is brought into being and all we are not talking of that. Now I inquire into myself. Where do I begin? Let's go step by step. It may take a little time. But where do I begin? I begin by what is around me, what is within me. Yes. Obviously, sir. Yes. There can be no other starting point. So, the world outside, the world inside. What is the criterion by which I, uh, which measures the outer and the inner? What is the measurement? I'm using not judgment, I'm using purposely the word measurement. But is it necessary to measure? If I inquire into myself, in a monastery, I can deceive myself for enormously. No, but I... But if I have a measure, 
just let me use that word for a moment, of what is actually happening in the world outside of me, hmm? to observe all that without any bias, and to see and to relate what is happening to what is happening inwardly, so that I see that's one movement, not two separate movements. So I'm not in a monastery. No, that's why I'm, I'm saying. I'm in the midst of life. That's right. And being in the midst of life, I see action at various levels, connected with me, disconnected with me. I also see the responses within me to action, or the capacity which may, I may have uh, over the years. Um, um, been able to even remain without reacting. I see all that. And I move into that. I move with it. It's not into no. it, but with it. You are it. Yes, that's why I say. Don't say I move with it. Yes, I am it. You are this. I, the, you see, it is easier with the interior movement to say I am it. It is much more difficult with an exterior thing to see. If you tell me that I am um, all the wars which are taking place, that's very difficult for me to see. No, we are responsible for all the wars that are taking place. Yeah, yes, I in a would, deep sense of the word. The, yes, but it, it, that's a distant thing to me. You must understand that's a dist, that responsibility is a distant responsibility. I say yes. Perhaps if I take it to its ultimate, I am responsible. But I can't link it to the same in the same way um, with which I link a response within me. Right. Naturally, a response within me is a living response, which has much would, more vitality. Would it, my next question: Would it deviate from what we are discussing? Why don't you feel re total responsibility for? The wars, the brutality, the terrible things that are happening in the world, why doesn't one feel totally responsible? How is one totally responsible? I think that... By being born? No, not involved. No, by being born? No. Then you... Then oh, is course, the question of original of guilt. Then it, no, as then, a human, living, grown-up human being, all my tradition, all my way of living, way of thinking, acting, as a nationalist, this or that, has contributed to this, to the present state of the world. I know, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're making it so difficult. A man commits a sadistic murder. I can't say that I am responsible for that sadistic not. murder. So that, you know, when you yeah. take it to that extent, it is impossible for me to feel the reality of it. Let's leave that. For so the I think it's better to question. leave that. Yes. Leave that. Let's leave that. But let's go into this. The. Let's probe into the ground of existence, which is the isness of life. Which is? The isness of life. <coughs> isness. <laughs> the, the verb is. So what? So if the only way to, way to probe is to, uh, is to move, uh, move into oneself, whatever that means. All right, let's take for the moment that word, go or move or enter yeah. into 
the whole complex of oneself. Yes. Entering to it, not as an observer from the outside. I am all that. Yes. It's not even that I state what I am. I don't. Yeah. I don't state. Uh, let me discover, uncover. Uncover, yeah. Uncover rather than discover. Yeah. Let uncover. me uncover what I am. And in co- uncovering what I am, I comprehend that one is uncovering the whole existence of man. Yes. That's possible to see. Oh, that's fairly simple. Yes. So, in this journey of uncovering, I mean, the superficial things are swept clean. That's so we won't go into that. No, that's a fairly simple No, you But once the superficial, the room has been swept, isn't that important to Matt, uh, the who sweeps the room? Who is? What does it mean, having swept the room? What it is? You follow what I'm asking? Is it the sweeping, or cleansing, or uncovering? completely moving away from all the superficial reactions, superficial uh, conditioning, and then trying to enter into the nature of of the movement that conditions the mind. Obviously, sir, you can't say that uh, you have swept the room and it is over. <laughs> the yeah. dust gathers again. Yes. So it is a sweeping is a is a is a movement which um, is part of living. You can't. But the grosser elements of the can certainly be eliminated. There are... The the subtler things survive in a... in in corners which you have not been able to get to. But the the more obvious things, it is possible to sweep away. Yes, obvious things can be. Yes. Like... No, we must be a little more. Then let me go. Let's go let's into go it. Let's go. Little. What are the obvious things? You, no, know? you know, for instance, Christianity, ambition, huh? ambition, ambition, or envy. Yes, hatred. Or hatred. No, but you know, people really to be free of hatred, to wipe it. No, just go into a little bit. To. To be free of hatred means something extraordinary. To be free of all sense of aggression, all sense of uh, if you think the, uh, any, there is no enemy. The enemy is you. But hatred is a different thing. From uh, huh? hatred is a different thing. That's why I want from the quality of aggression. Let me put it. Uh, uh, let's go into it a little, sir. Uh, aggression is related to hatred, it, because a, an aggressive nation or aggressive person inevitably hurts the other. No, but it, it, and the, that hurt breeds hatred. It's part of the same movement. Yes, that's why I say that there are the coarser things and there are the subtler things. 
hate, hatred, anyone who has known hatred knows that hatred is a, is a very powerful thing and a very destructive thing. But aggression may be to some extent part of one's nature even. Yes, see, it's, it, it may be that you are <coughs> a, 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 your, the makeup of yours. From the animal and so on. No, and your, the whole being, to, as a human being, you, to survive. you are more assertive than another. That is aggression. Yeah, yes. And to be assertive is not hatred. It's the subtler. That's why I'm, I <coughs> made the distinction between the grosser things which are possible to sweep clean. But how do one know what is gross or what is subtle? What is the mind that says this is... That's why I think the only way to uh, move into this is to see that nothing is trivial. Nothing, that no reaction hmm, is trivial. Is not only trivial, has its source hmm, yes. in one's conditioning. You know, sir, I saw recently uh, the casting of a tremendous metal uh, cauldron about seven feet in diameter. The slightest flaw, it didn't matter how slight it was, would have cracked the cauldron. And it's exactly like that. It doesn't matter how slight this, how subtle, how it still is, cracks the investigation. I understand that. Are you saying to me, that it needs a great training, great discipline, a sense of tremendous control, like the potter producing a marvelous thing. It needs great attention, energy, and very, very subtle hands and so on. Doesn't it? Oh, yes, it does. And this is where I think one, um, when you, one takes the word free from you. Free. Mm -hmm. And takes it to mean a certain f flabbiness oh, no. of the spirit. No, Please no. let us pursue this. Yeah. It's a very important. Yes, it's not flabbiness of spirit. Good Lord. Because it may mean that I, I don't accept authority. I don't think it necessary to do something. Oh, no. no. I can live a futile life. No. I no. can live a trivial life. Freedom. It doesn't the, matter. The very word freedom, Prabhuji, as far as I'm understanding from looking at several dictionaries, means, the very word is affection, love. And, and, and a tremendous of discipline. Now, Let me use the word discipline. I'm using it. I know you're um, using the word discipline, but I'm not in a, sure. In a, when I'm using the word discipline, is uh, I'm speaking of it as the demand for an watchfulness that the trivial does not creep in. Yes, but his watchfulness, which is awareness, if we both use the same word, does it need training? Does it need discipline? It, is, it, doesn't, it doesn't let's, need... Let's understand the meaning of that word discipline. No. No, you see, discipline, if I say that I must sit in the morning, cross my legs and look at the wall and fix my eyes and see that my mind has no thought, that is dis one kind of discipline. 
But the mind awakening to the fact that it must be aware of every movement within itself is also a discipline. I wonder how you're using that word. Because discipline is generally, isn't it generally used a training, conformity, imitation, hmm? restraint. But no, sir, there is diligence in, uh, without diligence, nothing is possible. And so you may discard the word uh, discipline, you put in the word diligence. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's go slowly. To be diligent, that means to be aware of what you are doing, hmm? yes. what you are thinking, to be aware of your reactions. Yes. Hmm? And from those reactions, observe the actions, action taking place, mm. and in that observation, in that awareness, is the action controlled, put in a certain framework, no, obviously. See, what I'm objecting to is, if I may, subject to discussion, what I'm objecting to is the word discipline altogether. No, but sir, you have become, uh, if I may say so, allergic to that word. I know, I'm not allergic. No, I have got an allergy, yeah, yeah. but I'm not <laughs> allergic to the word. No, because you, 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 you use it to mean putting it into a framework. Yes. But wait a minute. And I also mean the very act of learning is its own discipline. Yes, so you, uh, yes, uh, yes. But how does the act of learning come to be? You see, take it one step back, further back. From what does the need for observation arise? Or that need. Why should I observe? For a very simple reason. It is possible for a human mind to change something, to change himself, to change the world which is entering into such a catastrophic area. Yes, but in order, if I start with that premise, no, not <coughs> premise, it is so. All right, now if I start there, or I start with sorrow, which is much more, very, very often the real ground from which one starts. It's very complex, yes. yes the ground uh, is really sorrow. That, uh, but I think we have moved a bit. Moved away, I was coming to that. So, so let's go back. To this question. Now, we, this, what we started out was the origin, the ground of all life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then to inquire into that, you have to inquire into oneself. Yes. Because you are the, you are the expression of all that. Yes. yes. You are life. Yes. Now, the origin of that we are <coughs> trying to discuss. Right? Yes, the origin, the, the, the state from which that arises. arises. And I can only do that by understanding myself. Yes, yes. Let's use simple words for understanding myself. Myself is so terribly complex. Hmm? How do I approach, I'm just asking, how do I approach a problem that is complex? that is not to be easily diagnosed, easily say this is right, this is wrong, this should be, that should not be. It is it's like a living, complex, messy, disordered entity. But is it not because one starts with an attention 
which is looking for an ordered an entity that once finding the disorder gets I'm caught not, up in the I'm world. not looking for disorder. In or... which case, if you are looking without concern as to for what you are looking... No, I'm, I'm, no, no, no we, are mis- we are missing something. I said the world is in disorder. I observe it, and the world... I see I'm also in disorder. I begin with that. Yes. I'm yes. in disorder. Yes. Human beings have, have their, they have lived, have created such disorder in themselves and therefore outwardly yes. lived it for the moment there. Now, how do I comprehend, be aware, the origin of disorder? Do you follow what I'm saying? Because if I can begin to understand the origin of Disorder. I can move more and more and more deeply into something which may be total chaos, but is orderly. You follow what I mean? Isn't it by being as simple as possible about it? Yes, that's what I'm just trying to be. I am in disorder. So by using, I mean, I have certain instruments of inquiry. I have my eyes, my ears, my senses. Yes, yes. And you so, don't inquire with your ears or with your eyes. Don't you? you? But don't you inquire with your eyes and your ears? A little bit, yes. I inquire when I look around. I, when I and when you look some, in, yes. at yourself? Now, can I look at myself with my eyes? with my optic eyes, or I can see it myself in a mirror. But I can't see the co- complexity of myself with my eyes. I must, I must be aware, sensitively, without any choice, into this condition. Why do you say, sir, <clears throat> that you cannot be aware with your eyes? That is, again, what do you mean with your eyes? The inward eye? No, but there is, the opti- there, is the a way, there is a way of looking out and there is a way of looking in. You can look, looking in, all right, looking in with your eyes? Looking in, listening in? Yes, that, now we must be a little careful here because um, misleading. Yes, otherwise. so that let's, let's go into it. Yes. But this is where the... Isn't there, is there any other way? Yes, I think there is. Let's go into the other way. First of all, let us go into the way, whatever it is. The? Is there, is the eye here not part of the other way? Breathing. Breathing. Hearing. Hearing. Seeing. Seeing. Feeling. Feeling. Those are actually sensory responses. Right? Actually, I see the color. Yeah. In I the hear same, noise. In, in the same way. I taste something and so on. It is a sensory response. Yes. But is there not a sea of anger, reaction of anger, a listening to a reaction of anger? Do you listen? With your ears, or do you do you observe anger? How do you observe anger? By when you are angry, hmm? to look the cause and the effect of anger. When you are angry, you, you can't. can't. So but later on, you 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 you, carry on, you carry see on. the nature of the mind which has been in a state of anger. But the, you see the nature. You, the word you use is you see the nature of the mind. All right, all right. I won't... I won't no, because this is words. very important, Christian. I won't... But you see, I understand what you're saying, that the very act of listening, the act of feeling inwardly, 
Is it that you see it with your eyes? Hear with, hear with sensory ears? You see, if you put it that way, then you never get to the point. Because you're, the, sense, the sensory ear is so used to listening out that it can never comprehend what is. If you, if you take that and try and push it in, you'll never get to it. But would, you, would it help if we talked about perception? No, sir. I say it would help if you, if you talked about the, the seeing, listening with the eye and ear. Because there is a seeing, listening with the now, eye and ear. I hear you making that statement. Mm-hmm. From that st- hearing, I have, my, I have understood the words and see the meaning of what you are saying. Right? Right? Yes. The verbal communication has taken place. Yes. But the deeper significance... No, but, but uh, it is also taking place. I'm, I, while I am listening to you and seeing you, I am also listening and seeing my own mind, mm. the ground mm. of the mind. Mm. And what is taking mm. place? What is taking place? Who is listening? There is listening. I'm not saying who is listening. No. Listening. There is listening. But just me, Papuji, you must be clear on this point. There is no... We must be a little more carefully. No, sir, but in an act where you are totally attentive, take an act where you are totally attentive. What is the state of that act? Of being totally attentive. What is the state of action what is the st- that's born out of complete attention? A complete attention. I think it's clear. I'll answer it. <clears throat> First, to answer that question, we must understand what we mean by complete action, attention. I don't, I, attention. I'll it's, say not, what, it's not concentration. No, sir. No, I, no. I want to be clear on no, this. No, of point. course it's not. Of course not. So, attention <coughs> means there is no centre from which you are attending. No, of course not. I know. No, no, don't say of course not. See what's implied in it. You see, sir. I I would like to ask you one thing. Are we still Dusting the periphery? No. No, I don't want to... If you're not play. dusting the... The peripheral, peripheral argument uh, uh, and inquiry then, is then very little say, yes. Then I, when you come, when you ask that question, I, I want un- to unless I can that, understand sir. what attention is, I can't even take the no. first step. So I just want to uh, be clear. <laughs> attention means... What does it mean? I attend completely. I'm, I, you see, to attend completely is for the eye not to be there. Yes, that is the real thing. When there is attention, there is no eye. I, it isn't, I am attending. There is only that state of mind which is, which is wholly attentive. So that... <coughs> All the senses. Yes, all, it's the whole body, the whole... Being is awake, if I may say so. Yes, yes. You can, you can use your... And if you, I... use, if, you, if you are in that state where the being is awake, then you can listen, observe. Yes, that's... Yes, it's, yes. It's there. Yeah. No, but then we not... proceed from there. No, oh, you don't let's, want to let's, we're wandering off. I want to inquire into myself, right? Right? That's what we say. Because myself is life. <clears throat> In inquiring my, about what I am, I make, if I, my inquiry is correct, 
accurate, not distorted. I may come when the ground of the beginning of all life may be discovered. But if you don't let it be uncovered. Yeah. If you are starting from there, then I will say the first step you will find that the eye is there. Yes, yes, first step. See clearly, hear clearly. But the eye is there. Yes, of course. So of there, course, is, of course. there is the observer and, and the, the observed. observed. Oh, of course. Now, seeing that, it is also to... Now, wait a minute. Don't move away from that. I know there is the observer and the observed. Hmm? Is that so? I'm inquiring. How do I... I have taken it for granted. No. First, obviously, sir, when I first start an inquiry, I I start with the observer. Yes, I start with the observer. Now, I ask, or you, you have asked, and therefore that thought is in my mind, that... Yes, go on. That is there the observer... Is there an observer different from the observed? Yes. Now, having that statement within me, I look for the observer. Yes. Yes. Who is the observer? I look for the observer. Yes. Inquire into the nature of the observer. observer. Now, let's say, go slowly into that. Because the, if I understand the observer, and if there is an understanding of the observer, <clears throat> then perhaps the observer may see the, the, the falseness of this division between the observer and the observed. Who will see? Not who will see but the perception of what is true. Perception, not who sees, no. perceiving. No, so the only... See, what, the seeing of what is the truth of the observer will end the state of division. Of division, yes. Yes, that's what I've said a thousand times. In the state of division. So, and ending the. the, It's it's not a one process, one act that I end the process of division. I mean, you might say it happened once and you've seen everything, but it doesn't happen that way. No, uh, that's generally uh, stated that way. Yes, yes. for that instant, it is so. Yes, no. I go ahead. What are you trying to say? What I am saying is diligence. We, we use that word. Yes. Diligence or discipline is to to the, the, to have that inquiry alive within one. Yes, and that does not. I am saying that does not need training. No, I'm not talking of training. You brought it. I brought it. No, when you used previously the word discipline, just now you used it. No, no, but I'm using the word discipline without yet bringing in the word training. I say discipline is that I cannot expect to have an understanding of this unless the mind is awake to this and is diligent saying. about being aware yes. of this. All right, I won't bring in anything. I'll go ahead. You can't deny that. No, no, it has to be diligent. It has, it to, has be to be diligent. watchful. It has, it to, has be to be watchful. attentive, subtle, hesitant. It, it has to be all that. It has to observe. Yes. And do and rest in observation. Huh? Rest in observation. Yes. Yes. Find a oh. new home for itself in now, observation. People were wandering off again. I'm perhaps I'm wandering off. I said I'm inquiring to myself. 
Well, that's the inquiry. No, I, I'm, how do I inquire my, into myself? Except through my reactions. Yes. The way I think, the way I act, the way yes. um, I respond to the environment. Yes. I, the, my relationship to another. Yes, and I find, if I'm starting there from there, I find that as I first observe myself, the responses, the reactions, all rapid, confused, I know, continuous, I know, contradictory, and contradictory. So but in the very observa- observing, some space comes into this. Some space, yes. some order. Order. <coughs> that yes, means... This is just the beginning, sir. Huh? This is just the beginning. I know, I know. We are, why don't... Yes. We are sticking at the beginning. That's what I, I'm asking. I'm bored with the beginning. Sorry. So, let us proceed f- further. <coughs> Pupul, I would like to ask a question. Is it necessary to go through all this? To watch my reactions, to watch my act, my responses, to, to observe diligently my relationship with, with another, intimate or not. It must have. Go through all this. Or you see, it's a, yeah, I'll say something now. The fact is, one has gone through all this. Fact is, the history I, of you, you may you may have gone through it because you have accepted that pattern. No, no, no. Just hold me, hold a minute, hold on a minute. You see, yes, that's we have all done that. Hmm? The thinkers, the sannyasis, the monks, and the other... And Krishnamurti. I'm not sure. That's the point. I'm not sure. How can... Just me, I want to discuss this point very seriously, because that is... You either have, in the last 30 years, jumped yourself... Wait a minute. Let's see for a moment. We have accepted this pattern of examination, analysis, and investigating these reactions, paying attention to them, um, watching, uh, self-recollected, and so on, so on, so on. There is something in it which is which rings a false note, at least to me. You mean to say a person caught and a person caught in the whole confusion of existence. He won't even listen to all this. Then you must uh, there has to be space in order to even listen. Yes. How does that space arise? Because either you have suffered and you say I must find out or you suffer and say God exists, I love him, and I'm comforted by that. No, so you have still not answered me. You say, is it necessary to go through I'm asking this? that. I, I think it may not be. Then show me how. You can't make... Wait, I'll show it in a minute. Let's go into it. If as long as you accept this analytical process, which you call for the moment the analytical process of inquiry, re- watching diligently your reaction, all that. We'll use one word for that. This analytical sin, self-introspective, uh, this uh, it, it, constant watching, watching, watching. It's watching. not analytical. Look, all right, put it out. Constantly watching. Yes. Constantly uh, inquiry. Const- you follow? I feel, as I say, that. That has man has done that thousands of He has not, sir. Oh yes he has. He has not. He has done something quite different. What has he done different? He has, he has looked at his mind 
and tried to suppress. I know that that's which part was, of the that's part of the pattern. Suppress, escape, uh, substitute, transcend. That's all within that framework. It's not the same thing as to observe. No, I'm without see, trying to do anything about the observation. No, I am asking you. We are, we are not meeting my question. If I may point out, perhaps I may be wrong. <clears throat> You're not answering my question. Must I go through all this? See, the word must, I, must, must I apparently, is a very... All right, I won't use must. Because is I, it necessary? Is it imperative? Is it essential? Any, that I must go through this? No, but are you trying to say that out of the middle of chaos, you can leap to a state of total non-chaos? That's, no, I wouldn't put it that way. You see, you see you're you... trying to... Carry, no, no, I wouldn't put it that way. Then what are you saying? You I either am, you're saying... No, I, wait a minute, I'm saying very clearly. I am saying humanity has gone through this process. Some diligently, mm. some, mm. see, sacrifice everything and so on. This has been the pattern of our existence. Some have done it, right? Right? Inquired, analyzed, I want you to search, introspective examination, diligently watching every action and so on and so on. At the end, he may be just dead entity with some concept, illusory concept. He may not be. He, I said may not be. And very few, very, very few have gone out of it. So I say he may not be. But you, when you say that, is it necessary, then you have to... Um, I know, I know. Is it, if it is not necessary, then show me the other. Show me that's, the other. That's what you are saying. I'll show it to you. But first, step out of this. You see, sir? I wait, wait, wait. I'll show it to you. But look what you are asking. I know, I know I'm asking that. If I... Step out of the other. Wait, it's no, already there. Of course. That's Step out. That's what I'm saying. So Don't take time to go through all this. No, but if, what is meant by step out of it? I'll tell you what I mean. I recognize, just let me talk a little. I recognize very clearly, perceive whatever word you use, that this process of introspective observation, diligence, and so on, so on. Man has tried a great deal for a million years in different ways. And somehow it hasn't... His mind is not clear at the end of it. He's got some fixations. He's got some ideas and so on. Somehow this quality of movement is very, very shallow. Now, if you listen to that, that it is very shallow to do all this, and you see the truth that it is shallow, which means your disordered mind is now quiet, listening to find out. Right? Your mind, you are confused. Traditional mind says, I am accustomed to this diligent observation of all my activities, and that it is really very, very superficial. If you see the truth of that superficiality, you are out of it. It's like putting away something utterly meaningless. Now, wait a minute. Let me put it down the other way. 
my mind is disordered. Is disorderly. My life is disorderly. You come along and, and say, be diligent, watchful of your actions, of your thoughts, of your relationship. Diligent. Be utterly watchful all the time. And I say that's impossible. Because my mind won't allow to be diligent all the time. It is not diligent, it's negligent. So, and I struggle between these two being diligent and negligent. And then I. And I say, man has done this. But you mean to say, Krishnaji, a mind which is not capable of observing... No, I'm saying a mind that's willing to listen. Listen. Not diligent. I'm not talking about no, but, but please listen to me, sir. Do you think a mind can be in that state of listening. No, and that's very simple. Is it? Yes. I should just listen to a story that I'm telling. You're interested. Your mind is quiet, you're eager to see what the story is about and so on. I'm sorry, sir, it doesn't happen no? that way. No. Just me, just me. Just me. Don't say no, Papa. You see, Krishnaji. I ask you just a minute. I ask you, Prabhuji, to listen to what I'm saying. I listen. To, no, wait, wait, wait. Listen. I'm going to explain what I mean by listen. Yes. Not only with the sensory ear, yes. but with the ear that has no. no movement. That is really listening. That is not translating. That is not comparing. That is not trying to find what listening. I am listening to what you say. So completely. Then, if you are so listening, a man comes along and says, Don't go through all this. Diligent process is false, superficial. If you say, if you hear that, the truth of it, what takes place? What actually takes place when you see something really true? Is this diligent process, is it, it is time consuming, right? I have not time, I'm, my life is so short. I've got so many problems. And you are adding another, be diligent. And I say, please, I don't. I'm with a, worn out by problems, and you have introduced to me another problem. And I say, please, just you have problems. I know you have got many problems which are all interrelated. Just forget that for the moment and listen to me. That's all. Sir, if that was so, if that was so, listen, sir. Uh, I listen. If I could listen, and I do listen, to music in that way. Uh, music is different. But to listen, yeah, 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 yeah. if go I on, listen to on. music yes, in yes, that I way, that. it should change me totally. No, no, no. It does it's not. not. Of course not. Then? I'm, we are moving to something. No, we are, we are, I, I want to... 
you are talking of a mind which is already, no. I'm using the word in inverted commas, no. so, so, mind, a mature, a mind, a mind which is mature already, listening to a statement like that. No. There is a... She proposed that, I am not sure, we have not made our mind so immature that we are incapable of listening to anything. But how, you see, uh, 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 Krishnaji, you, you start by making things impossible. Of course. You see. And so, I know, no, see the truth, something impossible. And we have to. It's, it's but a the tremendous. Ki kind of energy which is needed yes. to deal with an impossible thing. That's what it is. This has been possible, this diligent affair. I said, it's so trivial. But, but what, what is, now I'll, I'll ask you, what is the mind which can deal with an impossible statement like that? What is the sta oh, nature of that mind? Huh? That which is utterly impossible is non existent. So you see, we, are, we are thinking everything is possible. No, so you are. Uh, I'm getting no, uh, you see, it's such a way you're getting to, sir. You are saying what you have said just now is non existent. So with a non-existent mind, no. No. listen. Look, Pupilji, if you and I, both of us agree, just me, even temporarily, that this diligent process has really led nowhere. It has led to various activities which may be beneficial and so on, but the the inquiry which says, I must go to the very source of things. Hmm? Not through this way, obviously. No, obviously, that I would accept. That's all. No, no, if you accept that it's not through uh, um, diligent awareness. No, but sir, even to come to a point when I say that it is it cannot come to it through this. Therefore, what has happened to your mind? You have then, you have put it this aside. Yes. Now, what has happened to your mind that said this is too trivial, too superficial? Out. Put it out. What is then the quality of your mind? I know what you're, what you're trying to say, sir. No, you answer my question. What is the quality of a mind which has been ca caught in the process of diligent inquiry? This time-consuming <coughs> diligence. When it sees that it has no deep fundamental value, value in the sense that this diligent process will lead or help to comprehend, come upon or uncover the origin. This process is not, because it's come time consuming, the other may have no time at all. But look at the danger in what you are saying. The danger in what you are saying is that I will not be concerned uh -huh. with sweeping the room. Oh, no, no. You, I am inquiring into myself that the very inquiry demands that I the mind and the heart, whatever, the whole existence is orderly. 
You start with the impossible. Of course I start with the impossible, Pukwiji. Yeah? Otherwise, what is possible? You have done all no, the possible. No, no, no sir. No, no, no. You have done everything that's possible. One has fasted, sacrificed, done everything to find the origin of things. That has been possible. And the possibility has led nowhere. It has led to certain benefits, social benefits and so on, and also has led to a great deal of misery of mankind. So I say, if you tell me that, that this diligent process is time-consuming and therefore time-binding, and as long as you are doing this, you are just scratching the surface. The surface may be most extraordinary, very nice and very pleasant and ennobling and all that, but it's just on the surface. If you ground that, not only ground, uh, but actually see it, feel it, it's in your blood that this is false. You have already stepped out of something that is the ordinary into something extraordinary. And we are not willing to do that. We want to go through all this. We treat it like learning a language. Learning a language, disability action, diligent attention, and so on, so on, so on. We carry the same mentality into the other. That's what I object to. I, I put aside the other. <laughs> no, I, I, it is not a game we are playing. No, I am not playing the game. You put aside the other. Which means careful people. It Which means, means this, uh, this, uh, even this, see, listening is at an end, if I may put it this way. Which means what? The movement of diligence has stopped. Right? Of course. If that is false, it has gone. So what has happened to my mind? My mind has been caught in the diligent inquiry and so on, so on, which is time-binding. And now he says, by Joa, I see this to be utterly superficial. And what is the state of my mind, the mind, which has put away something which, has man, which man has carried for a million years? What, what is that state of mind? Right? It's a fresh mind, right? It's a totally new mind. And that such a mind is necessary to inquire. And not inquire, and necessary to uncover the origin.
If I talk like this to a very disciplinary and religious uh, man, you wouldn't even bother to listen. You say, you're, it's all nonsense you're talking about. But you, in our dialogue, you say, let's go into it. And so you, you, are, you have put yourself in a position of, and of listening, find out. But if you keep on repeating this diligent process, you're, you're still like everybody else. <laughs> it likes you. Now, such a mind first of all, such a mind has no bondage. Could we go? There's no bondage to time. Which is, this diligent process is to become something. Is to clarify, to understand, to go beyond. So this mind has no beyond, it is not becoming something. Could you, would you go as far as that? See, the moment movement ends. No, I'm asking, would you go so far as to see the fact such a mind cannot have any kind of dependence, attachment, and so on. It is. I, yes, that I see. Ah, which means that because if you, that's uh, that's a. Uh, Yes, because if when as movement ends, the movement of becoming, all this which you have talked about is the movement of becoming. becoming. That's right. Which is the perpetuation of the self in a different form, in a different uh, network of words. If, if you tell me this, and I, and I start out to, disc, to uncover the source, and to me that's a passion, I'm, I want to find out. I'm not just playing a game. And to me it is utterly necessary. If, when, that Uncovering the origin of all life. When there is that uncovering of it, and it's there, my life, my actions, everything is different. Must be. But the other religion proceeds, my God, I'll die at the end of it. See, that's why I feel this. The understanding of that as a time-consuming fact, which is so destructive. Time-consuming is necessary to learn a technique, but this is not a technique to be learned.
Sir, you have the mind of a, the, the whole, you have really an antique mind. What? You have really an antique mind, mind of great antiquity. Antique in the sense of containing the whole of human. Of course, and you see, people, that's why it's important to understand. I am the world. You understand? I am the world. No one else can make that kind of statement with you. And one, one must make it, otherwise you're where are you to... When you see all this destruction, brutality, wars, killing, which has never stopped, A man who loved, loved, he wouldn't be British or Argentine or Israel or Arab or something. And he couldn't kill another. So, I see this process has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Everybody trying to become something. And all the diligent workers are helping man to become something. Illumination, the enlightenment is to be is to achieve enlightenment. It's so absurd. You see, sir. With you. Not with me. Oh, but just listen, sir. The whole movement of the dormant has ended. If that is diligent, is ended. Right. Becoming is ended. The whole, whole thing which is dormant in. I think it's probably, don't let's make this into some elitic, some, it's only for the few, few. The elite can only have this kind of mind. I, I refuse to accept that. That means back into the old division of the elite and the non-elite. Any person who gives attention, who wants to hear, who really says, I must find the source of life, and to be passionate about it, not just casual, then he will listen. Not to me, he will listen. It is in the air. See, like Buddha is supposed to have achieved enlightenment. Just think of such a state. Sitting under a tree, meditating, fasting, striving. I mean, the, you follow? And ultimately, it, one day it happened to him. That's too utterly meaningless. That means you are allowing time to be the factor of enlightenment. Time factor of deep, profound understanding. 